Welcome back for another cool algorithm. In this video, we want to go through an algorithm for sequence alignment using dynamic programming. So the problem is that we're giving two strings, x, which has length m, and y, which has length n. And the goal is to transform x into y with a minimum number of edit steps. So an edit step is essentially to insert, delete, or replace a character. And notation, xi is the character of position i in x. So for a quick example, let's say that we have two quite similar words, occurrence and uh, y is occurrence. Um, how do we make x into y? Well, after some thinking, we can see that if we insert some, uh, if we insert an a c here, in between the c and the u, and change this a into e, then the two strings will equal. So that's a total number of edit steps of two. To be able to find a solution to this problem, we need to think about the different cases uh, that can arise. So the idea is, let's assume that we're only looking at the last two elements and the cases that can arise then. And we also assume that all subproblems are optimal up to those just last two um, elements. So let's say that we are in case one. So this is a case that can occur, right? We're looking at when x and y is of length three, but this, this, this argument will hold in general. But so let's say that we're only considering, so this x3 and y3 right here. Let's assume that these, these are already solved. So we already know this is optimal. What do we do if that's the case? Well, we just align them. We just make x3 equal y3. And if, if it's the case that, um, that uh, x3 is, not, is already equal to y3, then we just pay, pay a cost of zero. And if they aren't equal, then we just set x3 to y3. Another case that can arise is that the x is of, a, uh, is of a larger length or greater length than y. So, and we know that these are optimal. So we're only considering the last two elements right here. And the, the, what we do here is that, well, we just remove x3, right? Because these are optimal. And remember, also, the goal is to transform x into y. So we make x into y by just removing this. Then for case 3, we have that, that uh, the length of x is less than length of y. And what we do here, since we, are, we know, we assume this subproblem of these are optimal, we're just looking at the last element. Then we insert an element here. So we insert y3 into this gap. The case four that can arise is that we have b gap on both of the two last two elements. But really this isn't the relevant subproblem because then we can just remove those gaps and we have the optimal solution. So we ignore case four. So we have three cases. Let's try to generalize the idea that we, we saw on the previous slide. Case one, well, xm is aligned with yn. Then we can look at x1 uh, up to xm minus one and y1 up to yn minus one by simply aligning xm and yn. So we, we make xm equal the, the, the character of yn. And remember here, if they are equal, then we don't pay anything. But if they are unequal, if they don't equal each other, then we need to pay one to change the character of xm. So case two, let's say that xm comes after yn. Then it follows that we can look at x1 up to xm minus one and y1 up to yn by deleting xm. Case three, yn comes after xm. It follows then that we can look at x1 up to xm and y1 up to yn minus one by inserting yn in the last of x. So we've seen that the structure depends on solving the subproblems, right? We assumed on the previous slide, we assumed we've solved the subproblem and we will just looked at the last two elements, but having solved those subproblems suggests a dynamical programming approach. So we can define opt ij 
to be the minimum number of edit steps required to transform x i uh, x one up to x i into y one uh, up to y j. And then we remember the three cases. We have that opt i j is the minimum of aligning this specific character. This uh, I guess x i and the uh, y j, and then the um, finding the the solution to the subproblem when we look at uh, x1 up to xi minus 1 and y1 up to yj minus 1. Or we can delete or we can insert. So those are the three options. For each, we pay a cost of 1 here for deleting, right? If we delete one, then we move one backward in x. If we insert, then we, we're still at the end of x, but we move one back in y. We also pay a cost of one of inserting. So, and we saw that this function previously was one if they are not equal, otherwise they are zero, right? If the characters are already equal, then we don't have to pay anything. But so this, this is a recursive formula. We need to consider what the base case is for, for opt ij. So the initialization of opt ij then we need to remember first what opt ij means. It's the number of edit steps to transform x1 up to xi uh, to y1 to up to yj. So if we have opt, let's look at the first one. If we have opt 0, 0, this means transform nothing into nothing, right? That's a cost of 0. If opt i, comma 0, that means transform i characters into nothing. Well, we just do that by deleting the i characters. So that will have a cost of i. Opt 0, comma j. That's just transform nothing into j characters. And we do that by inserting. Uh, inserting the j elements and we get j. Uh, a cost of, total cost of j. Let's look at an example when we have the case x is some DNA sequence and why is some other DNA sequence and we want to know how can we you know make this DNA sequence into this one so let's form a a matrix where we have the y that we want to transform it to and the x and then remember that we have the initialization for the first row and the first column so what this means right here is that we want to transform nothing into nothing, right? That's cost of zero. And here we have nothing and transform it into, for example, let's say T and C were here. Well, that's a cost of two, it's a cost of three, etc. Here, if we're standing here, then we want to transform T into nothing. We do that by removing, and that's a cost of one. Here we want to remove T and G, that's a cost of two, etc. And then we look at the first one. And we see here that we're either going, um, so we're either, let's say the first case, we align T and T, and we pay a price of zero because they are already the same. And then we move to the diagonal, okay? So if we are to align them, then we pay that cost and we move to the diagonal. If we instead... Um, in uh, delete if we delete this is the delete one then we move one up and we move here right if we delete the t then we pay a cost of one and we end up in this position transforming nothing into t for a cost of one that will total cost be two or in the last case we insert t and if we insert a t then we will be in this position where we have to transform t into nothing so then we look at those, that's 0, 2, and 2. And we choose the one that has the smallest. So we choose 0. We just align the t's, the t values. I mean, we just align t with t. Then for the next one, we do the same thing. And recognize here that we're also looking from on the one up, the one to the left, uh, I mean, the one up, and the one to the diagonal, and one to the left. Right? Here we can see instantly that the one to the left is of smaller value right so the the optimal solution in this case would be 
the one to the left, which would be um, this one, inserting. So in this case, if we want to transform T into TC, then the best choice is to insert C, which is also shown by the recursive formula. Now we can see here as well that the rest of these, this row will be quite easy to fill out because as we see this, the smallest value is always the one, I mean, the one smallest here is also the one to the left. So if we wanted to transform T into TCG, for example, that would mean we just insert C and insert G. Similarly, if we have TCGA and we have T, then we want to insert C, G and A. So this row will be quite easy to form, just increment each column value here by one from the pre, uh, compared to the previous one. And then in this, this uh, column right here will also be quite easy to form because if we have TG and we want the, the target to be just a single T char uh, the character T, then we just remove the G and we pay a price of one. For example, if we have TGA, that's a price of two, etc. And we continue with our recursive formula. We just look, well, we can go above, diagonal, or the one to the left, okay? In this case, the one to the diagonal is best. So if we go to the diagonal one, that means we, we match, or we align rather, G with C, right? And we cost a, p a price of one for that, which is why there's a one in this recursive formula. So in this case, the one is best, and we just turn this G into a C. So what we've seen is that we're always looking at three values, either the one to the left or the one to the diagonal or the one above. If we look at the subproblem up above us, that means we delete the one that we're currently at. If we go to the subproblem at the diagonal, that means that we align them. If we go to the left, that means that we um, we insert. In this case, I believe there actually is, no, the, the, the best one is the one to the diagonal. If we were to compare the recursive formula, since G equals G already, we pay a price of zero of going into the diagonal one. So the total would just still be one here, compared to if we were to insert a G, right, because these two are the same. But inserting a G, we would pay a cost of 1. So the best choice here is to, to align G with G and then to insert C or go to this subproblem. Now, quite similar for the rest of these values. I mean, in this case, we just, we see that the one to the left is always the smallest one, so we just keep inserting. That's the best choice. Then let's see here. Yeah, okay, sorry. So for this one, we look at the one above us and the one to the diagonal. And we compare. Either we... we uh, in this case, actually, since A is not equal to C, we have two choices that we can take. Either we remove the A, which is the one above us, and we go here, and we just transform this G into a C for a total cost of two, or we go to the diagonal one of inserting, insert, I mean, aligning A with, with C and then removing G. So there are two viable options here. And uh, same for the, the next one, we look at the one above or the one to the diagonal and they are both viable in this case because A does not equal G. So we pay a price of the same of going above by deleting A or by aligning G and so then solving that subproblem. So that will also have a cost of two. But now, for example, when we're here, we notice that A is the same as this one A. So we pay a price of zero and we can just go and we go to this one for the subproblem. That means that we pay a total price of one. 
And so I think you understand intuition and the idea behind the recursive formula. So if we just fill out the rest of these values, then at the end, we will come to the last at the bottom left, I mean bottom right. That means we want to transform the entire sequence, uh, entire string X into Y. That will be a total of edit steps of three. But how do we actually find a solution? So we know the minimum number of edits, but we also want to know which of the specific edits to do. So the idea here is that we, we use something called backtracking, which is we just check whichever of the three cases was the best, and that was the edit. And graphically, we can denote this as the three, the three options, and I, we have discussed this also. If we move to the diagonal, that means that aligning was the best choice. And remember, aligning, we can either change it or just uh, and pay a price of one, or we can just, if they already equal, pay a price of zero. Moving horizontally means inserting was the best choice. Moving above, or yeah, moving to the one above us, that means deletion was the best choice. So for example, in this case, when we compare these three here, we see that, see here actually, we see that inserting was best. So in this case, we want to insert A. And now we, we look again and we look which, which of these three was the best ones. And the best choice in this case was aligning, which is C. And then we just do the same thing. Which, which of these three were best? It was deleting. And then continuing going through each of the choices until we eventually come to the base case here. And then we see that from doing this, we've actually formed the specific edits to do. So the best choice in the, at the in the end is to insert A, and then to align the C with C. And then to remove G, and then to align T with T here, align G with G, align C with C, align A with A, align G with G, and then to insert here, insert C, and then at the end insert, uh, I mean align T with T. So we see that the the edit steps were to insert C, remove G, and uh, and also insert A. And just a quick note on the time complexity. Finding each specific array value was a, which is, is a constant time. But we need to fill the entire this uh, matrix. So knowing that X is of length M and Y is of length N, then we have big O of M times N uh, time complexity. In the next video, I will code this algorithm in Python. So if you want to know the, uh, the implementation details, check out the next video.